Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned into Pearl Chat. We are showcasing Ugandans in the diaspora and Ugandans in Uganda. Yes, you could be a musician, a star, but we want to see the real people, the people that take care of us, the people that are inspiring us. Next to me today, I've got a lady from Uganda who is an inspirational. Her name is Margaret Mungera, and she is the president of the World Medical Association. That is the president of the World Medical Association, and she's Uganda. Margaret, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for, ha for having me here. Margaret, could you tell us about your journey, how you got to be a doctor, where you started from? We want to hear everything about you. Okay, I'm a Ugandan and I, I was brought up in Uganda. I studied in uh, Nakasero Primary School um, and then I moved on to Gayaza High School. And uh, it was during that time when Idi Amin took over and um, went through some very turbulent times. Um, I passed to go to university. Um, where I, I, I did my, uh, 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 my degree in medicine and, uh, and I, I came out as a medical doctor. That was 1982. And then I did my internship, still in Mulago Hospital. Um, then I came to London and uh, I was at the London School of Tropical Medicine where I did a diploma in tropical medicine and hygiene. That was 1984. And then I went back to Uganda and I started working at the only psychiatric hospital we have in the country. I worked there as a junior doctor, and then I decided to do my postgraduate, or what you call residency here, and I then, you know, I became a psychiatrist in 1992, and I continued working in that hospital. I came here and did training as a forensic psychiatrist and became the first forensic psychiatrist. Now remember when forensic I- Forensic psychiatrist in Uganda. And when I, when, I, when I became a psychiatrist, I was the sixth psychiatrist. We're only six of us for a little while. Uh, we are now 36 psychiatrists for 36 million people, which is outrageous. Um, I work, 2003 I transferred to Mulago Hospital, which is the main government hospital in Kampala, I, uh, where I work as senior consultant psychiatrist, and I do administration work. Um, I look after a directorate which, contain, which has the departments of medicine, and uh, internal medicine and psychiatry. So I work in Mulago now, in hospital, yeah. What about with the World Medical Association? Well, in 1997, um, I was elected uh, pre vice president of the Uganda Medical Association. And um, in 1998, uh, I became the first woman to be president of the Uganda Medical Association, which is the, the, it was, it's an association which, which, uh, which represents all the interests of all medical doctors in Uganda. Um, and I was, um, I, I became president and I served continuously. I was elected um, unopposed for about seven years. And then in 2005, I decided to, to leave that. Um, I had been appointed by His Excellency, the President of Uganda, as a member of the Global Fund Commission of Inquiry into mismanagement of the funds. And then in 2010, they came back and said, come back again and be president and fight for the, uh, you know, for improved pay of, of doctors. And um, I did that. Um, but this, uh, in 2012, um, I was mobilized, headhunted by the, uh, the British Medical Association. Um, people from there supported by the German Medical Association and the South African Medical Association. And I was uh, supported into going to stand, and including my own association. And um, I was elected um, unopposed, when I mean, unanimously I became, I was elected uh, president of the nation is a global body that represents more than nine million doctors in the world. And uh, these are doctors in 107 countries in the world. So British Medical Association here uh, has represents doctors, but it's also a member of that association. So basically what we do as an association is we promote standards, ethical standards among doctors, but we also advocate for access to health care for all the people in the world. So we are concerned uh, with places that don't, where access to health care is not, quality health care is a problem. But we're not only talking about quality health care, we're talking about quality health. So that is what the World Medical Station does. So I'm president for a year, I, uh, I started last year in October, 
and I will end in October this year, and then I'll become the immediate past president. But I have started a spearheaded uh, a capacity building program for national medical stations in Africa. And I'm going to be working with the diaspora. We are starting with the diaspora in UK, the doctors. And um, it's being mobilized by the East African Health Forum and another organization that's working with doctors in, in, from Nigeria. Good thing you mentioned the diaspora in the UK because we have a lot of, uh, as we, we did have a word earlier on, we have a lot of professionals in the diaspora and sometimes they feel that they can contribute towards um, Uganda, but then they don't have the support, that they don't get the support to do that. I mean, what is your take on that? Yeah, and that is exactly what we are trying to do because we have a massive brain drain of, of med doctors and other health professionals. And um, instead of trying to convince people to come back because the conditions are not favorable, what we are going to try and do is to see how we can turn this brain drain into brain gain, meaning that these that working through the national medical associations, because the national medical associations, like in Uganda, we have the Uganda Medical Association. It's a collection of doctors who it's an association, and if it's strengthened properly, um, we want the doctors in the Ugandan doctors here to work together through the World Medical Association. Is the one mobilizing? It's that, for example. What we are trying to see is, what's, who are the doctors we have? Who are, where are they? Get the database going, knowing where they are. What are their interests? How can they contribute? There are those who might want to do teaching. There are those who want to, might want to do research. There are those who want to do health education. And they will be working through the National Medical Association. So the Uganda Medical Association will be what they work through. Um, to, they connect through, so it will be easier for them. Even when they want to come back and, and take off a year and take a sabbatical and come, they will know where they, the, the, who, the, who to work with, who in which area they will work with, yes. And then obviously with regards to doctors, doctors are said to get paid a lot of money. You would expect the doctors that are over here to come to Uganda and expect to get the same money that they were getting over here uh, with help from the government, they believe. Yeah, no, but it's not going to happen. I think what we are trying to look is we are looking for goodwill. And um, if we can get, if, if, if a doctor this side partners with a doctor in Uganda, they can look for funding and do something together. That's not an issue. But um, this program is sort of voluntary. And we have got a lot of people who are interested in volunteering. When they go to visit their families at home in Uganda, do a ward round, do some teaching, give a lecture, you know, that sort of thing. Anything that is they can do is very welcome here. Yeah. Right. In England, yes. we have uh, the national health system in yes. place. Yes. Why, haven't, why hasn't Uganda got anything like that in place? You know, Uganda has inherited uh, from the, the, the colonial times. It inherited a system where government provides services which are free. Um, and it, it's what the government provides services. services. What, what, what kind of services? So it, at one time it was able to do so, but the population has grown. Um, you know, so all services, whether it's uh, emergency services, whether it's uh, outpatient, inpatient, but the population has grown and government cannot afford to do that. Now it has recognized it cannot, but it's not moving fast enough. It's trying to come up with a national health insurance scheme. And this is the same everywhere in Africa. But I think that we are moving a bit too slowly. The government needs to, to, to speed up that. Because that will mean that people will spend, that those people who need help, the services, will get the services they need. But at the moment, it is only for those that can afford to pay. There are a lot of people who cannot get services because they can't afford to pay. But if you have everybody pulling resources like it is in a, in a health insurance scheme, then it means that those who get sick, those who can... The most important thing is to make sure that the money goes where the services are needed the most and to people who need the services. And right now there's nothing in place. I mean, we've heard of cases where people will go to a pharmacist and there isn't any medicine in the... In the yeah, there is something in place. I, I can't say that it is absolutely zero, but it's not enough. And it does mean that people die in large numbers. Um, we have very high number of women who die during childbirth. I mean, in our country, in Uganda, it's about almost 500 women out of every 100,000 die, which is, uh, in other countries, it's only four or five out of 100,000. Um, we have children dying, a lot of children dying before the age of five years. So 
um, it's it, the, 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 the people who die, the people who are ill, are, are still very many. Um, so government uh, is, is, is trying to give services, but it's not enough. And it has recognized it's not enough because it's been looking for don donors have given money. It's still not enough. Uh, private churches have given money. You know, the religious, religious institutions have also provided some, some, some services, actually 40% of the services. There's also services from private hospitals, but it's not enough. I mean, your take, how would you encourage people to take part in the national health system that is coming into place? Because, you know, my understanding is a lot of people will want to take part because there's corruption. You know, they think that their money is just going to be uh, taken away from them. And I think the thing is that there's a national health system, but it's not working well. It's, it's weak. The system is weak. It needs to be strengthened. And, uh, but it's not enough. We want to put money into the system, and there's a lot of money being thrown into the system. Donors are giving us money, including from here, UK. We get a lot of money from the British government. But the most important thing that is missing now is leadership and governance to make sure that this money as money is collected from the national health insurance scheme that it goes back into the services it is not go it does not go missing or it is not put to it's not used to do what it should not do because that's also happens so the most important thing is to make sure that this money goes where it should go one of the areas which where we need more money is research to make sure that the the, the, the services that are, are, are provided um. You're a psychiatrist working in Uganda. Do you do you have any mental uh, mental centres, medical centres for mental people? Because I'm sure that well, you know what we've tried to. Um, there is mental health services that are being developed. I know they are not. We are not yet there yet. But um, we have very few psychiatrists, very few psychiatric nurses. Um, but we are trying to develop the services and we provide, we provide those services. They're not necessarily by medical people because a lot of the problems, the common problems, the anxieties, the depression can be handled by counsellors. Um, but there is depression when it gets very severe or anxiety this problems when they get very severe. They do need to have um, to be seen by a, a, a qualified you know, professional, a specialist in mental health. Other problems that we have, we have so we have the common problems are anxiety, depression, um, the common anxiety disorders, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. I don't know if you've heard of PTSD. It is, um, it is something that um, a condition which is quite common among people who have been affected by some trauma like war. And they come back and they see flashbacks and they, don't, they get nightmares, they get a lot of anxiety and that sort of thing. We have that because we have had war in Uganda for so many years. Um, alcohol is, is also a big issue in Uganda. A lot of people have alcohol problems, they're addicted to alcohol and they need help. And our support services are not that. Our alcohol rehabilitation services are still very, very rudimentary. A lot of the services are, we are trying to train every single health worker to be able to give some support. But when it comes to rehabilitation, the services are, are mainly in the private sector. They are privately run. Um, the one we have in, in Butavika, which is the only... Is that, is that the only one? The only Butavika is the only mental hospital we have in the country. But we've tried to put up, to build their, their psychiatric units, which have been put up all over the country um, in, a, in the regional, what we call regional referral hospitals. And we've trained what we call psychiatric clinic officers. These are psychiatric nurses who do more intensive mental health training. And then they're the ones who are running uh, the services out there. But a lot of the psychiatrists, because the psychiatrists are only about 36, majority of them are in Kampala, they are teaching, they're doing research, and they're, they go out to support, supervise the others. So we do have that specialized services, but it's not enough. We are trying to train more psychiatrists. We are trying to train more psychiatric nurses. We would like help. We have help from a group of people who are in the diaspora here, who are mental health specialists, who have in the diaspora here in the UK, mental health professionals, who have done a lot in terms of linking with us in Uganda. And, and support. Support, support. They've done training. They've been training the nurses, training the clinic officers. Um, they've provided a service, and they've been working quite well. Um, so there is, there is, you know, we do need help um, in terms of teaching, in terms of research. 
and therefore we'd welcome people from the diaspora to come, especially those who are mental health specialists. They should link up with these other organizations which are working with, with, with Butabika Hospital, the mental hospital, and Mulago Hospital, and see what service. But we also need a lot of support in terms of rehabilitation services. But we also need a lot of support on prevention and health promotion. You know, people to talk on the radios, to talk on the TV. To speak out. To speak out, to talk about mental illness, what is it, to cut down on the stigma. I know there was this stigma. There's a lot of stigma because a lot of us in Africa uh, believe that this mental illness is because is, is, is because somebody's bewitched you and that sort of thing. Those those are there, but we need to be able to raise more awareness about the need to search to get treatment for those who are severely ill. So we do need the health promotion programs as well and sensitizing the community so communities know how to protect themselves, how to prevent themselves from becoming mentally ill, where to go when they have problems, because usually they need problems which can be dealt with by non-professionals like counselors, but when they get very severe, then they end up with a psychiatric problem. So we can prevent that from happening by having more and more training, more and more counselors, we don't have enough, but making sure that even we have social workers and other people, they are still, the service is still very rudimentary. The reason why we touch a subject of rape because uh, our rape or um, child defilement in Uganda because we have a lot of cases of that happening and sometimes we feel that um, or we are seen to see that these cases are not dealt with on a serious note. It's the same thing in Africa, it's the same thing in Uganda. I mean, we have men, I mean, sexual offenses are very, very common, um, incest is very common. Child abuse of children, uh, child sexual abuse is very common. The government has put in place laws um, to address and to get hold of the perpetrators. But I think what we need to do is to enforce those laws. So a lot of people will, will bribe the system um, when they are arrested. Um, child marriages are still there. Um, children are pushed into prostitution, really. Young people who are involved in prostitution. So we still have a very big problem. We have a, a, a that we need to, to make sure that these laws are implemented. These perpetrators are got hold of, but also we need to provide a service for those who have been affected, so that the survivors can access a psychosocial service. Yeah. And uh, with, with regards to that, do you feel that it's a, a poverty issue? Uh, 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 there is a lot to do with poverty. Some people are more vulnerable. They're exploited. Uh, because of the poverty, especially people who allow the, who give away their children in child marriages. Um, but um, the conflict, the war has also had its, uh, it has also had an impact because during war, um, you know, some, you know, um, um, rape is, was used as, as, as a weapon. But also um, in, 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 in um, where you have children and you don't, you haven't protected them enough by giving them the information on how they can protect themselves. Then you're going to get a lot of children being, you know, um, you know sexually abused. We have a very big problem. Um, teenage pregnancy is very, very high in Uganda. In fact, Uganda has the highest teenage pregnancy rate south of the Sahara. By nearly 28 or so, 28% of, of women in Uganda, by the time they're 18, they've been pregnant at least once. So teenage pregnancy is a very big problem. And as a result, um, ch you know, children having children, they sometimes abuse them. But also the children are abused because parents are busy trying to make ends meet, especially in urban areas. Um, we still, we don't have that much of a cohesiveness as we used to have. So children, you know, children are no longer, there are a lot of children who are neglected in a way. It's a poverty issue, a health it's issue. Poverty issue, it's a health issue, it's also a lack of oils. There's still be beliefs among some people um, that when you have sex with a virgin, that it cures your HIV AIDS. So that is also another thing that has been propagated. Yeah. Can maybe a normal person, not forgetting the doctors or the nurses, how can we help ourselves? Because the East African Health Forum is talking about health. But it's talking about health, but it's, it's, they're, not, they're not necessarily doctors. They're people who are not medical professionals who have got together with, with medical professionals to try and, and, and see what they can do. So it, it doesn't stop you if you're not a medical person to get involved in that association. My opinion still counts. Yes, yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. Margaret Mugera, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, you're very welcome, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been tuning to Pearl Chat. We'll be back right after this.
have been watching Pearl Chat. Today we were discussing Uganda health, Uganda's health system, Uganda's health issues. We had a lovely young lady that joined us today. Her name was Margaret Mugera and she mentioned that we need you, we need your support. We need your support at home. If you can, whatever you can contribute, you don't have to be a doctor. You can be a doctor, a nurse, even um, uh, assistance, healthcare assistance. You can still help. You can still, you won't get the same amount of money that you're getting over here, but your support is needed back home. We really appreciate you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.